What's up, you guys? I know it's been a long time. I'm I'm really tired of saying that. Um, it's been a really long time, and you know what time it is. <clears throat> it's Turk time. I live forever, I don't ever die. Murder, murder, murder on my mind. Line after line after line. Time after time, I'ma thrive. Push a button, then I start to drive. Surf boy ripping through the tides. Okay, if you're watching this video, it's because you want to know how to get into the aviation industry. And I know, I work for aviation now. That's the new surprise job that I teased in my last video about getting my new luggage. I should have came out with this first, but we're here now. And you got some information you want to find out. I got some information to give you. So listen up. And if you got any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I either make a whole nother video for it, answering the questions, or I'll just answer you directly in the comment section. But you gotta ask if you wanna know. So, I am a ramp agent. A ramp agent kinda covers a lot that's below wing. And below wing is pretty much what they do underneath the surface. So you know, when you catch a flight, you guys are above wing. When you're going on to your flight, when you're getting your ticket scanned, when you're going through TSA, that's all above wing. Below wing is where the dirty work happens, where you're getting raw and gritty and really getting after it. You're hooking up the ground power, you're hooking up ACs, uh, you're stacking bags, you're unstacking bags, you're in the bag room, you're driving carts around to flights, handling belt loaders, pull tugs, tow bars, all this stuff you'll learn about if you get the job. Let me teach you how to get the job. I've seen a few videos about how to become a flight attendant. Those are very good. I would suggest you look those up if you want to be a flight attendant. But I'm not going to lie. I watched a lot of those. And a lot of that applies for ramp agent as well. I'm a ramp agent, so I'll be explaining how I got there. Well, first, just like any job, you have to do an application. So I did my application in July. And um, it was for a certain airline and um, I had to wait a little while before I heard back, but I did the application. I was crossing my fingers because aviation is something that I wanted to do for a long time. I came really close once with another airline and I had a little situation going on and my background check didn't go through. So, But anyways... I did the application in July. I did not hear back till October. So be very patient. Just because they don't get back to you right away, there's a lot going on. You know, aviation kind of took a hit during, you know, that time in 2020, you know, <clears throat> that was getting everybody sick. So they are mass hiring almost everywhere and they will get back to you, whether it's a no whether it's a yes don't take it as a no if you don't hear anything because if you don't hear anything just consider it a yes until you hear absolutely no finally when i did hear back a few months after i submitted the application i got an email the email said to pick a time to set up an interview now the interview is not in person it was through a video chat um so you had to pick a time. They gave you like three different dates with like maybe six different times of the day. Me, I like to get things done early. So I chose the earliest time for like two days after I got the uh, the email. And usually like, you know, interviews make me very nervous. So, you know, I took an extra day to get my mind right and ready to pass this thing with flying colors. So I chose the interview time very early in the morning. Um, I still had, they still require you get dressed like you're going to an actual interview. So I had, uh, a black polo with black slacks on. I had socks on because I doubt they're going to look at my feet, but I mean, they could have, nah, that'd be kind of weird. But anyways, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, something like this, you know? Um, but it was a collared shirt, of course, not the hat, not the chain, um, and we get on this video call. And at first, I don't put on 
my video. I just do audio. She's talking to me. I can't see her. She can't see me. And then she put her video on and my audio is still on. So she asked, can I please put my video on? You know, I have uh, a blue background that I do for my acting shoot. So that's what I had as a background, not this. So I turned my video on and immediately this lady that was interviewing me, a, a, a younger woman, she, she smiles immediately. And that kind of made me feel very comfortable with the interview is like, okay, she's not like stuck up and writing things in a pad and, and just like a robot, she's actually gonna interact with me already showing like some type of emotion. So, I mean, even if it wasn't, that's how I took it and that's how I went on to do this interview and it actually turned out pretty great. So for the most part, she asked me, why do I want the job? Why would I leave the job that I had at the moment, so not currently, but why would I leave the job that I had for them if that was going to be the case? And what are my expectations? What are my plans for working with the airline that I chose? And for the most part, like after I answered those, she was asking questions, but to be honest, it didn't feel like an interview. It felt like you was talking to an old friend and you was catching up. We was just having conversations about traveling and how that even happens. The things that goes into making your travel work. So much goes into it. You would have no idea if you're just a traveler. But you will find out because after you watch this video and you submit your application, you will get the job. So we just had a regular conversation for the most part. And then she was required to ask me about like... Uh, five or three questions that was really hard. It's called the STAR method. She even explains this to you. So if you could look that up, STAR method interviews, just kind of prepare for that, but don't, you know, over prepare for it because you don't want your answers to seem like robotic and very generic. Like, oh, like name a time Name a time that you couldn't finish the task at hand. Why is that? Or when's a time that you overachieved at work and you did the extra mile to make sure the job was done? Things like that, you know? And just to be honest, it'll be easier because if they ask you again and the answer switches, they're going to know you've been dishonest. So when our interview was wrapping up, she said, if I make it to the next round, the next round would be an assessment for the job. And then the interview ended. Maybe about an hour after that, maybe like 15 minutes. I'm saying an hour because it sounds better, but it was maybe 15 minutes or less than that. They said you are moving on to the next round to do the assessment. The assessment is pretty much reading and comprehension. You read something, you answer the questions, and also they ask you a few math questions like, hey, there's four bags here. There's four bags there. How many bags total? Things like that. So again, there's nothing that I can prepare you for, but if you're good at reading and comprehension and math and literature, things like that, you will be fine. For the most part, it's common sense. Like, hey, like if a ball rolls on to the runway, what would you do? It's just like, would you throw it away? Would you kick it? Would you like throw it at the plane? Like you choose what the answer is. I can't give you the answers, but if it, you have to question yourself about it, it's probably not the right answer. So I do my assessment, maybe a week and a half after the assessment, I got an email saying that I received a CJO. Now, CJO is a conditional job offer. Conditional job offer means you pretty much got the job, but you got to go through these last steps. These last steps you kind of don't have control over. It's the matter of time and just who you've been in life, pretty much. So the conditional job offer requires you finally go to meet these people in person. 
Now, you won't be the only one. It'll be like a group of you in multiple groups at that. So you go there. They kind of give you a orientation, so to speak. And then you do your drug tests. You sign up all the papers for your background check. You sign papers and prove you've been vaccinated. They're going to ask you about your job history all your life. Have you ever been terminated? And also with the background check, they actually fingerprint you because it's like an FBI. So if you ever been arrested for anything, uh, if you ever like stole candy and like got arrested overnight, it's going to come up. It's going to come up. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you lost your job offer if you have any of those things going on. But they're going to ask you questions about it. And you got to tell the truth. They're going to ask you. They want to know what you did through your mouth. And they're going to ask for the documents itself. So please tell the truth. Mm, that's if you want the job, of course. Most ramp agents have to pass a physical exam. So my physical exam was lifting up these bags, placing them, and doing it over and over again for about 20 minutes. I was sweating like crazy. You just had to do it. Um, they want to know if you're physically fit and able to do these things. And they check your blood pressure. They have like EMTs nearby. So if it's too much pressure for you, you know, you was all set you know and just because you failed the physical part doesn't mean you are disqualified from getting the job but maybe they'll put you in a different area you know so after all that um you kind of just go home and you wait and you can't rush the background check because it's not really them doing it they send it off to investigators and fbi so they can do it so they're going to take their time and they have a lot of people to do. It's not just you. It's not just your city. There's so many people to go through this process. Some people might be trying to join the FBI, you know, and that could be something. So this process took another like two weeks and a half before I found out um, that I was going to get the job. So after that, I got the job offer. Um, they emailed me and they said, you know, there's about four different start dates. You could start in two weeks. You could start in three weeks, a month or like two months from now. So you could either start then. And at the time, I want to say it was mid November. So I could start at the end of November, the beginning of December, uh, the beginning of January or the middle of January. And when you want to get a good shift and you want to get anything good, it's all by seniority. So the faster you're in the door, that's when your seniority starts. So I picked the first date, the earliest time possible to start my seniority. So when you pick a date, you go in, you fill out all your papers, you know, so you can get paid, your direct deposit, things like that. And this job, of course, requires training. So they used to fly you out. They probably do for certain airlines, but I know mine didn't. They used to fly you out to their headquarters. And because that thing happened in 2020 when everybody was getting sick, you know, with the uh, alternate version of the flu, they stopped flying people out, so you have to train at your home city. So I got trained here in Boston. Um, we went through uh, a bunch of safety protocol and how to do things right. Training is two weeks. At the end of the second week, you take a test. If you do not pass this test, you do not get the job. So even though you have the job, if you fail this test, terminate it. So it's about, I want to say 90 questions and you're only allowed to get five wrong. But if you pay attention in your classes and you take notes like they tell you to, you will not fail this test because if you study and if you're paying attention in class, it's almost like they simplify it for you so much that you kind of can't forget. So if they say, uh, 
there's this thing on planes. I don't know if you ever see them, but you know, if you're trying to turn in a car, you have your blinker. Well, planes have the same thing. It's a red thing called a beacon light. It flashes, flashes, flashes. They say don't go next to the engine when those beacon lights are on because if you're in front of it, you could get sucked into the engine. If you're behind it, you could get jet blast, which is going to burn you alive and, and probably push you and sweep you from the area. Things like that. So they'll ask you a question. Hey, when the red beacon lights are on, what are you not to do? It's just like, all right, you don't go next to the engine. You don't even want to go next to the plane, really. So it's things like that. Um, and, you know, I went through my two weeks of training. I took my test. I passed. I got the job. It is now mid-May. Well, we just got through the first week of May. Um, to be exact, is May 9th. And my birthday's in nine days. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. So it also comes with a lot of benefits as far as flying, family flying, friends flying, and um, also, you know, your health, your dental, things like that. They really, the airline industry takes care of you pretty well. And, uh, and now a lot of these places, because they're hiring in bulk like this, they are, um, they are offering bonuses just to sign up. Like, Hey, if you get the job, we have a sign on bonus for you, $500 or $2,000, regardless of what it is, you guys are getting a sign on bonus for getting this job. It's a good job to have. I could talk about the benefits more if that's what you guys want to hear. Just, you know, leave a comment. Let me know. Um, if you guys are wondering about tattoos, so in the ramp, it doesn't matter. You can have as many tattoos. They can be exposed because you're not really dealing with customers. You're dealing with each other. Very little do you deal with customers. So um, you could have tattoos. Now, if you're above wing doing the gate agent or if you as a flight attendant, you probably can't show tattoos and this is why they dress so well you see them in their button-ups the scarf and things like that so um, below wing isn't so strict uh, get ready for the jokes people's gonna joke about you being new and don't be mad when the veterans don't really take fond of training people because a lot of people leave after training um, because they found out it's a job that they can't handle. So they just don't want to waste their time training somebody that's not going to keep the job. So this is just precaution. Um, I could talk about the benefits in another video and what training really consisted of. And, you know, if I missed anything, just let me know. I'll be happy to answer questions in another video or in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for watching this video, but I'm going to wrap this one up. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just got off from working overtime, so if I sound a little hoarse, I've been racking up on them hours. Uh, like I said, uh, it's a matter of time, and uh, damn, I don't have my watch, but it's Turk time. Dad, what's wrong? Had hit me now, I'm sipping on the deuce deuce. I just wanted to get big on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I'm still here. Well, while you're here, go ahead and click that like button and the subscribe button. Okay, the notification bell too. Leave a comment saying you did so. Lastly, click the video on the right for more cool content. It's Turk time.